I'm moving up the street Ain't feeling my heart beat no more But I found my melody I'll take one more please, yeah Hello my friends and welcome to another vlog. Today is more of a weekend in my life vlog taking you along with me as I get up to a few things. I do have a just overall plan of doing some errands, having fun and relaxing. So uh, that does include reading and not necessarily what I was reading in my last vlog. I'm putting a pause for the holiday weekend on the history and stuff like that and reading something fun. So right now I'm actually about to leave to go hang out with one of my friends. I've already cross-referenced where we're gonna be, where there's actual parking and where we're gonna go like before and after. So I wanna get there a little early to make sure I can park and be okay and then drive like how I want to drive. So I will tell you what I'm reading when I get back, but just want to say welcome to the vlog and I hope you enjoy this video and this weekend with me. So this is my final project product. Actually, it's this way because this is the top. But yeah, so this is my final product from this paint splatter. And you bet your bottom dollar that I'm gonna hang this up. I am obsessed with it, but where am I gonna hang it up? I don't know. Hello, it's been quite the weekend and I really don't think I've I've talked much in this vlog but now I'm here for a little book haul because you saw that I went to the bookstore at this point like three days ago <laughs> and I, you know it's been quite the journey to get here. It's now Tuesday. I had Monday off of course for the holiday but I didn't do anything. I was just so I don't know if I'm like like actually sick or just kind of run down but I kind of honestly I'm probably just like a little bit run down worn out because I've done so much but I really did enjoy this weekend and now I just want to tell you about the books that I picked up um so the first book I got was for Tess because he loves murder mysteries so this is the golden spoon which is by Jessa Maxwell and this is a murder mystery set in a mansion that's also hosting a like a tv competition like the great british bake-off that's what i understand about it so far and the reason that i picked this up for him well one he likes mysteries but basically i was watching a book two video and he walked past while the person was talking about this book and he was like oh i would i would read that and i was like well we're gonna go get that book <laughs> so we got the, i picked that up at the bookstore and then I also picked him up the this book about like gardening. He has like a green thumb already, but he wants to improve, of course. And this is To Bold Boldly Grow by Tamar Haspel. Oh, apparently she's a Washington Post columnist. But yeah, so finding joy, adventure, and dinner in your own backyard. So I think I'm excited about for him to read this one too. So then I picked up the <laughs> In the Time of Butterflies by Julia Alvarez. And this is a book set during the 1960s during the 
Rafael, Rafael, Rafael uh, Trujillo dictatorship and I think it's going to be a book that explores that but also it's it's based the true events that it's based around is these three sisters have been found near their wreck jeep at the bottom of a 150 foot cliff on the north coast of the Dominican Republic and it's just a novel of courage love and the human cost of political oppression so I think this book is gonna be so this book is our July yeah, this book is our July pick for the Romance Language Center Book Club. So it'll be an opportunity to learn the history, learn more about the Dominican Republic. And yeah, I I am at this point, I feel like I can actually make a video about how book clubs, specifically this book club, but book clubs in general have changed my reading and the way that I approach reading certain things. And I just have a lot of thoughts. Like approaching reading from literature perspective is important, but approaching it from like the cultural and historical perspective even if it's not necessarily a historical fiction. I think that's something I've been thinking about a lot about. Um, but yeah, we can talk about that later because obviously my thoughts aren't fleshed out. But yeah, so I'm excited to read this one, even though I do think it's gonna be quite heartbreaking. But another book that I have that I just, I think will pair so well and it'll be really good to finally read <laughs> after I read In the Time of Butterflies is Edwidge Dandicat's The Farming of Bones. And I've already started reading Edwidge Dandicat's short stories, but based on that that's why I'm like even more like whew. I feel like I want to join or at least like be a part of a book club that reads the specific books that I'm intimidated to read like this one and the only reason I know I'm gonna finish this is because of the Romance Language Center book club so uh yeah I think these books these two will pair well together and I'm excited to learn more about all of that. I picked up Booth by Karen Joy Fowler because I've heard nothing but good things about this and it's like a generational family story from the family of Wilkes Booth. Yeah John Wilkes Booth and you think I would know the name but John Wilkes Booth so I'm excited about this because of like the historical fiction but also the, the like family sagas sign me up <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> And then the last book I got from that independent bookstore that we went to is a book that I'm glad I picked up because it's going to help me when it comes to grad school because I there's three classes I want to take and I'll tell you more about it but one of them that I don't think it makes sense to take this semester because it does make sense for me to go full time is a I was gonna book is a class about material culture and understanding the materials of the past helps us understand everyday lives in the past so I'm excited to read this book to like make myself feel better about being realistic and that is all that she carried the journey of Ashley Sack a black family keepsake by Tia Miles and it just follows the journey of this sack through the different generations and this one apparently is yeah won the national book award but another when I was flipping through like you see like the actual materials and this is I think material culture like that was one of the things I loved about the the museum in our Dublin what's the name of the museum it was the museum oh the book of Kells and like I was like I don't really care about the book but it was really cool to see the different materials that went into making a book of that type back then so yeah this is I think this is a good <laughs> well I already wanted to read it and I tried to read oop, I tried to read this book from like the, the ebook you know all this stuff and I was like you know what we're gonna buy it and I made myself feel better whatever uh I feel like I shouldn't feel like I have to justify my uh purchases the way that I do but yeah um so yeah those are the different books that I got from that bookstore and then we went to Barnes and Noble um because we we're waiting on our food at Kava which is a whole thing but we waited on our food and I was like oh Barnes and Noble but also my I was not planning on going there to buy anything I went and I was looking at the magazines and I was reading for a little bit and deciding which books uh which stories to read online but then when I walked past this I was like, I have to. So y'all know that I started listening to um, Binya Banga Wainaina's memoir on audio in the spring. And I've been in a nonfiction mood ever since. But when I walked past this in the store, I was like, <gasps> because it was cover out in like the new nonfiction section. So this is a collected works, fiction and nonfiction of Binya Banga Wainaina's uh, work and title how to write about Africa and then the, the title essay is actually the last essay and it's called how to write about Africa but it's like satirical and 
I could not remember if I either read this or someone heavily quoted it in while talking about like the the lack of proper or respectful media coverage from papers when they were talking about Africa. So I was def definitely familiar with the first that title essay, but I'm excited to get into more of his work. So it's different essays well there's stories and essays you know i really am interested probably more in essays but there is the most authentic blackest africanist soccer team there's also how to be african well so those are the essays so he has different short stories he has essays he has satire pieces so like just even the titles alone i'm just like yes and yeah so i don't have a physical copy i'm still doing an audiobook of one day I'll write about this place, the audiobook, his memoir. Um, but then I can't wait to get to this because for a lot of reasons, for a lot of reasons. And yeah, basically everything I picked up is like kind of related to like nonfiction or history of some sort. I'm even reading right now. I don't want to jinx it. So I won't tell you what it is, but I'm reading a book that I previously read, but I DNF, I stopped it because I was like, mm. but it's even it, it's like a romance and it's more light, but it's still like, um, history culture-esque very exciting so i'm actually going to end this vlog here because because i got sick yesterday monday um i'm actually behind on a lot of my work i wanted to do and some of the errands i didn't get to run that i wanted to either but yes we're going to do a little study with me tonight we're gonna catch up and have some fun but i do want to say thank you so much for watching um I love this photo I just gotta say just style <laughs> but yeah so it's one to say thank you so much for watching um you can leave I'm looking at these flowers so you can leave a flower emoji if you made it to this point in the video and I'm gonna give you a virtual hug um because thank you so I'll see you in my next video I love this dream and feeling my heart beat no more but I found